Yes, she's sturdy. I can turn her upside down if I want. What? Let's try it with this one. So sturdy. Hello and welcome to this episode of Happy Baking. I'm Erin Jean McDowell and in today's episode, we are going to pie school. I wanna teach you everything you need to know to master the techniques of par and blind baking. You'll learn the difference between par and blind baking and how to use these techniques to get your absolute best pies yet. You can find more tips and tricks like these inside my cookbook, The Book on Pie. Too long? And my all but a pie dough recipe is linked in the video description below if you ever wanna par or blind bake along with me. All right, let's get par or blind baking. Let's talk about par baking. Par baking stands for partially baking the crust. This technique is used for any single crust pie where the filling requires baking. In my opinion, any and all single crust pies require par baking. This includes things like single crust fruit pies, like a cherry or an apple that don't have a top crust, but it also includes other favorites like pumpkin or pecan. Partially baking the crust before the filling ensures that the crust is evenly golden brown and well baked all the way through. A lot of folks don't realize that the crust really needs a head start so that it can be fully browned and baked by the time the filling is perfectly baked and set. And if you don't want soggy bottoms, and none of us do, you wanna make sure that you give it that head start. Give it that little extra love. Just par bake, guys. It's important. <laughs> Just FYI, this is why double crust pies don't typically involve par baking. Things bake from the outside in. With a longer total bake time, like for a double crust pie, both the top and bottom crust can get really, really nicely brown without the help of par baking. Here's how to par bake. First up, preheat your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 degrees Celsius with the oven rack in the lower third of the oven. Place your chilled docked pie crust on a parchment lined baking sheet. I like to dock the pie crust right after I roll it out and put it into the pan. It's a little bit softer then, so it makes it easier for the fork holes to go through. If you try to dock it after it's really well chilled, sometimes the crust might crack or tear. Line the inside of the crust with parchment paper. I like to do this by crumpling it up into a ball just to help it form into the pie crust a little bit easier. Then we need to fill it all the way to the top edge with pie weights. I have a collection of ceramic pie weights, but just FYI, you need quite a few packages of those to make sure they fill all the way to the top edge. I love those ceramic pie weights because they retain heat and they really do a good job weighing it down. If you don't have ceramic pie weights, you can also use something like dried beans or legumes. My friend and incredible baker and baking author, Stella Parks, has an amazing method that I love to shout from the rooftops. She likes to use granulated sugar as a pie weight. And I think this is really brilliant because you can reuse the sugar later after it is cooled again. She calls it toasted sugar. And unlike dried beans, which eventually you may have to throw out, this is a way that you can weigh down your crust without any food waste. We have to fill the crust all the way to that top edge because we're not just weighing down the base of the crust. We're also supporting and weighing down the sides. That's really important and actually having enough amount of pie weights is one of the things that can prevent your pie crust from shrinking down while it's baking. This is why there's one thing in my life I hate. I don't use the word hate. I don't feel hate. I'm a happy person. This is happy baking. But there is one thing I hate, pie chains. Hate. Pie chains. Do you know what these are? They're a little tiny piece of metal. You know, yay long. You put it in a spiral in the base of your pie. It doesn't care about the sides. It barely cares about the base. Why does this exist? Who made these? Were they cruel? Did they not want you to have pie success? I want to like you, inventor of pie chains but you make it hard. Love sugar, love pie weights, love beans. Hate pie chains. Okay, okay, back to it, back to it, back to it. All right, 
We've lined our crust with parchment paper. We've filled it to the top edge with the pie weight of our choice. Now we're ready to put it into the oven. I like to bake it for 15 to 17 minutes, just until we get a light brown color appearing on that outer edge, on your crimp, on whatever you've done to finish your outer edge. We just wanna see a little bit of browning. When you start to see that browning, it's time to remove the pie weights from the crust. I like to keep a heat safe bowl right near the oven so I can easily lift the weights out and place them somewhere so they can cool. This is something I didn't explicitly put in the book on pie that I regret. Sometimes when I remove the pie weights, I add a few more punctures or dock holes into the crust. During that first part of par baking, the crust is starting to set and some of those dock holes can get filled in. So especially when I'm making a really, really extra flaky crust, giving it a few more holes can help ensure that it doesn't puff up during the final stages of the par bake. Then it's time to return the crust to the oven. The goal here is to get the whole inside just barely set. We don't need to bake it all the way. We don't need a ton of browning. What we like to see is sort of a medium golden brown color around the outer edge. And then the interior and base of the crust should look matte in color and very dry, kind of a pale white color. This usually takes about two to four minutes more. Remember to cool the crust completely before adding your filling and getting the pie back for its second and final bake. Now let's talk about blind baking. Blind baking is when you fully bake a pie crust. I think a lot of people misunderstand and misuse this term. They use it kind of universally, both for partially baking the crust and for fully baking it. But in this world of happy baking, it stands for fully baking the crust. This technique is used anytime the filling itself will not require baking again. This is usually for cold set pies, things like coconut cream or lemon meringue. It's important to fully bake the pie crust for these pies because they are not going in the oven again. So we wanna get them fully baked, nice and golden brown, really crisp all the way around. The good news is blind baking is the exact same process as par baking, except we add more time during that final bake when you remove the pie weights. After you remove the pie weights, the crust is going back into the oven for five to eight total minutes of baking. The crust should be nice and a deep golden brown color around the outside edge, and you should even start to see some browning on the base of the pie. Be sure to cool your blind baked crust completely before you add your filling. One of the trickiest parts of par or blind baking is determining that just right level of doneness. Here's how to break it down. Check out this photo from the book on pie. It's actually one of my favorite pictures in the whole book because it shows you right in the center there, a perfectly par baked crust and a perfectly blind baked crust. Side by side, you can also see under and over baked versions of these crusts, just so you can get it just right in your own kitchen. One of the main keys for doneness is to look at the color of the browning, but also we wanna look at the inside of the crust. We want this matte texture and it should be kind of a pale white color. When things are under par baked, they have a tendency to look darker in color or even shiny. This indicates that the crust needs a little more time. If you like Brimley, be sure to like and subscribe. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Happy Baking, where we did a par and blind baking primer. I really hope this episode gives you the confidence to master these techniques once and for all. And if it does, please let me know in the comments because I love to know what you're making in your own kitchens. You can find more pie tips like these and tons of recipes in my cookbook, The Book on Pie, available wherever books are sold. As always, until next time, wishing you lots of happy baking. I'm sure we could come up with a good joke that has book on as, uh, as the punchline. <laughs> <laughs>